This is your wake up call. The Breakfast Club, the show you love to hate. From the East to the West Coast. DJ Envy. Angela Yee. Charlemagne the God. The realest show on the planet. This is why I respect this show, because this is a voice to society. Changing the game. You guys are the, the coveted morning show, but y'all earn it. Impact in the culture. They wake up in the morning and they, they want to hear that Breakfast Club. The world's most dangerous morning show. Be in the mother... Be in the- Yo 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 Good morning, Angela Yee. Good morning, DJMV. Charlamagne the God. Peace to the planet. It's Monday. Yes, it's Monday. That's right. Everybody look alive. Act like you're happy to be here. Okay. Mm-hmm. Even if you're not, act like you act like act like you're happy to be here. I had a good weekend, so I'm in a good mood. You did? What you do? I went to Foxwoods for the first time. It was a women's empowerment luncheon, mm-hmm. and it was pretty amazing. So uh, to be in that room with all those women, it was like 350 people there, and it was just dope. And I've never been to Foxwoods before. It's a casino in Connecticut, Yep. and it's huge. I think they said it's like the largest one in the Western Hemisphere mm-hmm. or something like that, but we had a really good time. So um, that was fun. And then I had an event in my coffee shop at, with the SBS, the Small Business Services, and a lot of my local... Uh, politicians came out. Hakeem Jeffries, who's my congressman, he was there. So shout out to him. Uh, Chio Se, who is my city council member. So it was good. I had a good, positive, fun weekend. Yeah, me too. I just stayed, I stayed at home with the family. It and was, I watched the Nets game. It was Easter Sunday, so Easter weekend. So <laughs> my mom and pops came over and the, and the kids were there. We did a little Easter egg hunt and just had some dinner and watched the games and relaxed and just laid on the couch and relaxed. That's what I did all weekend. Yeah, we did the same. We had the Easter egg hunt yesterday. I was recovering from Saturday because Saturday I took my old 43-year-old ass out in these streets. You know what I'm saying? Because my man Andrew Schultz, drop on the clues bombs for Andrew Schultz. You know, that's my uh, podcast partner, friend uh, for my Brilliant Idiots podcast. And, you know, he's one of the biggest stand-up comedians in the country right now. And this weekend he had two sold-out shows at Radio City Music Hall. Mm. So I decided to go to the Late Show at mm-hmm. 10.30. Wow. And then went to the after party. Wow. It was out in these streets, 2, 3 o'clock. Wow. Trust me, I ain't built like that no more. Goodness gracious. Not even a little bit. Spent all day mm-hmm. recovering Sunday. And didn't even drink a lot. You know, I had like two drinks. It wasn't even alcohol. It was just that I'm old. Cra- and I said to myself, I said, either the alcohol is stronger nowadays, or I'm just getting older. You're getting older. One here. I think it's the, I think it's the latter. I was I was DJing. Uh, this is my first party I DJed in New York in the, in the year, because usually I'm, I'm out of town. And when I was leaving the party, I seen that you were out. I was like, this must be old. The fact that you were out at 2 in the morning? No, I was out 2 in the morning. You posted sh- pictures of shots? I said, no, this... this- no, I didn't pick... Uh, Ivy posted those. Who's Ivy Rivera? Ivy posted those. I reposted them. But yeah, I was out. Then I had the two youngins with me, Ivy Rivera and Nyla Simone and my wife. And it was just... It was just too much. <laughs> too much? It's too much. <laughs> he didn't even say I'm lazy. Yeah, I was, I was out to 2 a.m. That's it. 2 a.m., 2 a.m., 2.30. I was in the house. That's a lot for me. Four, four but, that, but that throws your whole day off the next day because, you know, we still got kids. So you got to get up early, early and, you yeah. know, and it rained on Saturday. So we had to get up early and put the eggs out early. Yeah. Well, matter of fact, we didn't even do it outside. Now that I think about it, we did it around the house. <laughs> really? No, I did it outside. No, we did it around the house. We didn't even go outside. And usually. And I, it was cold, too. It was cold. It was chilly, but the kids Ooh. wanted to go outside. I couldn't find the eggs with the candy already in them this year. So I had to put all the candy. Oh, they got a service for that now, sir. Really? Oh, we used the service this year. They actually were supposed to put the eggs around the yard, but it was raining. So they, they do the, the everything? Yes. I was like, God damn, they got a service for everything nowadays, don't they? I didn't know it's that. It's a great business when you think about it. <laughs> yes, it is. You might only come up once a year, but hey, that year you going to lick. They wow. licked. Whoever that service is, licked. Well, I got older kids, so the older kids had to help me put the candy in the, in the, in the, in the eggs and put them out around the yard. And then, then my wife hid the eggs too well. <laughs> oh my God! So I'm trying to help the three year old. I'm getting frustrated. <laughs> what? Where the where's the eggs? Eggs? Fred, where's these eggs? <laughs> like, who would think to put looking here? <laughs> All right, let's get the show cracking. And don't forget, one day till my book comes out, me and my hey. wife's book, Real Life, Real Love. She's going to be joining us tomorrow on the show. I'm excited Uh-oh. about that. What? I don't know if you're excited. I don't think excited is the word you would use. I'm excited for yeah, I can see the nerv- I, the I can see the nervousness in your beard. <laughs> I, can, I know. I'm excited. The book is coming out. Oh, the book is coming. You're not excited. She's coming here. I don't trust y'all. Oh, so no. got you, guy. I'm about to say because I can see like the nervousness in your beard. It's drawing in a little darker. Well, I darker. read the book, so oh, we'll have goodness. some spoilers tomorrow. All right. Well, let's get the show cracking. Front page news. What are we talking about? Man, so these kindergartners actually accidentally drank some tequila and got a little woozy. What the hell? They accidentally get tequila from? How did you get that? All right, we'll get to that next. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning.
Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV, Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Let's get some front page news. Now, in basketball, uh, NBA, the Bulls, uh, they, they beat Milwaukee, right? 93. No, uh, the Bucks won. No, yeah, they did. The Bucks they won. The Bucks beat the Bulls 93. I, was say, I know I wasn't that sleepy. No, I didn't watch that game. The I Suns beat the Pelicans 110-99. The Heat blew out the Hawks 115-91. And the Nets lost to the Celtics 115-114 at the buzzer. Yes, that was heartbreaking right there. It was a great game. Kyrie spoke after the game. This is what he said. You know, it's nothing new when I come into this building, what it's going to be like. But it's the same energy they have for me. And I'm going to have the same energy for them. And it's not every fan. I don't want to attack every fan, every Boston fan. But, um, you know, when people start yelling, and you and all this stuff, it's but so much you can take. Uh, as a competitor and um, you know we're the ones expected to be docile and be humble and take a humble approach not nah, f- that's the playoffs this is what it is you know I, I've I know what to expect in here and it's the same energy I'm giving back to them oh, I'm glad man. Kyrie feels like that I mean because Kyrie you, you know you didn't have the best relationship when you was playing with the Celtics and then last not year you, you wiped your feet on their logo so of course the Celtics fans don't like you and yeah. he scored like 39 so he had a, a great game but they'll be playing again uh, Wednesday night for game two. That was a tough loss. In Boston. Yeah, tough it was loss. a really tough loss. I thought they had it. No, the Celtics are going to win that series. And the reason the Celtics are going to win that series is because the Nets defense sucks. Bottom line, point blank, period. And the Celtics are just a better team and they way bigger than the Nets. Pause. Yeah, but all that, the, the, the Nets 15, were up. 114. The Nets were up and they only so won what? by one. The Celtics were up by 15 at one point. Have you, well, first of all, if you've been watching basketball all season, yeah. you know for you know the Celtics are going to win the series. I wouldn't say that. Well, they would have okay. blew, blew them out last night. They it's just still the play. They're night. still the playoffs, and right. you still got Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving Absolutely. on the floor. But I'm telling you right now, the Nets don't play good defense at mm-hmm. all, and they're not big enough for the Celtics. Pause. If that was and the, case, the Celtics are the best defensive team in the league. If that was the case, the Celtics would have blew them out last night. Well, they were not up by, by 15 in the fourth, sir. But they only won by one, and that That's was a fine. last-minute shot. It's the, it's the playoffs. Second. It's the seven games. I'm just telling you, they're gonna win the series. I don't I'm think not, so. I'm not saying they're gonna blow them out every game, but they're gonna win the series. I don't think so. All right, now, classic kindergartners in Michigan accidentally drank tequila during snack time. A student brought in Jose Cuervo's ready-to-drink margaritas, and the class thought it was juice. What? And one of the kids felt woozy and a little dizzy after having four or five sips. That's tequila. That's what it does. And here is what one of the moms had to say. I asked her, like, is my daughter okay? Um, And she said, she's right here, and she looks okay. And then I said, okay, well, how much does she drink? My daughter take medicine, and first off, no kids should be drinking. And, you know, that, you know, just the shock itself, it, it burned. Like, how do you feel? Like, anything could have happened. Well, that's why. I like to sip my tequila. I'm not, I'm, I, I can't do shots no more. At that age, you should be able to do a shot or two when you're younger, is what I'm saying. Hey, at my age, I, I got to sip my tequila. In kindergarten. What school is this, though? Um, the name of the school is Grand River Academy, Livonia. Where's that? In Detroit? Michigan? Where's yes, it? in Michigan. I think Livonia is near Detroit. I don't know if it's in Detroit. Because I thought now they don't they don't even allow you to know. share stuff when you bring into the to the schools anymore. Like you can't do certain things anymore. Like you can't do cakes, you can't do cupcakes in school. Well, I don't know if the teacher could keep an eye on everything, but they're they said pouring shots. Yeah, was, they weren't pouring shots. No, no, no. Shots. They were not pouring shots <laughs> knowing that it was tequila. It was uh, they had these little Dixie cups. And so the kids huh? were, one of the kids brought They're in. Pouring shots. The yeah, kid, the little tiny you cups. You got to pour them into all these cups. The kid, the kid was pouring oh, that, shots. Yeah, that's a lack of supervision. Yes. Because if you're a teacher, even if you're watching the child, regardless of what he's pouring, if you're seeing a child pour cups of something for other kids, you should be paying more attention but to that. But the yes. kindergartner who bought the drink and knew that it was alcoholic. So he was pouring shots. So he came to get the class tipsy, basically. He came to get the class effed up. Yeah, so the school said faculty called poison control. And they said, when we try to keep an eye on everything our students bring to school, that's simply not possible. It's unfortunate that these types of adult <laughs> happened, beverages man? can be easily mistaken for child-friendly drinks. We used to be a country, man. That's your job. Your job is to watch everything that's going on with these kids, man. They're in kindergarten. It's not like this is middle school or high school we're talking about here. It's kindergarten. Like, You're supposed to be supervising the kids. There's certain regulations, like you can't bring in cupcakes anymore. You can't bring in certain things anymore for these kids, for the school parties That's anymore. a fact. So no. I don't know how they were even able to do that. Because of allergies, because of yes. people poisoning. Yes, that's a fact. Yes. And if you watch a kid pouring drinks for other kids, somebody should say, why are you doing that? What are you pouring? And I'm sure it was in a package. Nobody saw the Jose Cuevo It was package. one bottle. D- 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 yeah. That is even worse. Yeah, it was one bottle. That's a lack of supervision. All right, well, that is your front page. This is kindergarten news. kids we're talking about. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, phone lines are wide open. Again, 800-585-1051. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. 
Let's go. This is your time to get it off your chest. Whether you're man or black. Say it with your chest. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. So if you got something on your mind, let it out. Hello, who's this? Yo, what's good? This is Jermaine out of Atlanta. Jermaine, what up? Hey, Bob. Going on, Peace, y'all. Jermaine. What's up, man? Get they call you chest. Abaka, you said? Hey, Bombay Vodka. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Bombay yeah. Vodka. Yes, sir. Hey, man, I hope this is not true, but I want to give a shout out to Rest in Power with a case K-Slay, man. I've been seeing it on my timeline all morning. I'm hoping it's not true, though. Real legend in hip hop, real legend from the east side of Harlem. Just want to shout him out. That's my dude right there. Yeah, um, definitely the rest, in, rest in peace to K Slay, man. The drama king. Rest in peace, man. He's lost a hey, legend when it came to that mixtape stuff and the DJ, man. So definitely rest in peace. Hello, who's this? Yo, can you hear me? I can hear you. Get it off your chest, brother. Hey, I got a question for y'all. And yes, I'm sir. Y'all can help me out with this. Hey, right now, I feel like I'm at that level that um at the top but i want to go higher i want to go farther okay what I mean, are y'all what, advice on what do you what do you do though I mean, <laughs> what do you do that's a very random question what do you do like what do you mean you're at what, like, what kind of level so, what are you talking about man right now man i made it for roaches and right now i'm at uh let's say i make 150 right now a year mm-hmm. i'm good but man i got a feeling like i want to make i want to go farther like i feel like there's so much more potential I got inside of me and I'm hoping maybe y'all can help me out with that we can't but I'm sure that you know you can dig deep and figure it out you're not even telling us what you do you just say you make money you can be a drug dealer for all we know we don't know how you make your 150 well, yeah, I'm an electrician oh okay well say that brother do you, yeah. have your, do you have your own company or do you work for somebody I work for a company boom uh, there you go uh, now, that's an electrical company now you gotta start focusing on establishing your own electrical company you, like, you gotta trade that you know a lot of people will always need People gonna always you gonna always need an electrician. So maybe that's what you should be thinking about. Think about starting your own company. But see, that's a channel that I don't even want to go down. Like, it's, I want to find a new channel. I oh, you don't, don't want to be an like, electrician no more. Man, I want to find a new channel. Like, electrician is a new channel. Eating food is a new channel. Driving cars is a new channel. Like, I want to find that new channel so I can be like Benzo, or I could be like Elon Musk. Oh, okay. I don't think that's anything so, that we can help you do. That sounds like you have some work to do. So what work is that, Angie? Sir, I can't tell you how to do what you got to do for yourself. But like, you can't please, just say, I want to be like Jeff Bezos, and then it happens. You got to create your own path. Clearly, it's something with electricity, though. Maybe it's finding a new a new energy resource. Well, I don't so, know. Hey, I got I got a question. Hey, that's how I end up in electrical trade. At one point, like, I only made 40000 until I decided to go to the electrical field. That's right. So, so um, hey, man, I it's mo- hey, I'm going to be honest with you, man. It's Monday. I'm not ready for these complicated questions yet, sir. It's, yeah, you got to get a little is. further along in what yeah, you, you want to do. you got to figure out yourself. This, we can't tell you what to do, brother. Yeah, this takes longer. I, I, this takes longer than a phone call. Get it off your chest. 800 I want to be like Jeff Bezos. 105. One. <laughs> if you need to vent, hit us up now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Me too. The Breakfast Club. Wake up, wake up, wake your ass. This is your time to get it off your chest. Whether you're mad or blessed, we want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? Hey, guys, Sandra, the Haitian therapist. Hey, Sandra. Sandra, Sock Passe. Mat Boulet. I just got a second job um, working at the county jail providing mental health services, and it's been amazing. Oh, good. Oh, congratulations to you, Mama. Well, thank you. And then I also wanted to say that I've been harassing Dolly and Taylor in their DMs. I know they can't see it because they don't follow me. But I have a great idea for a mental health podcast that no one else has done. Oh. It's very unique. Even down to the name. So I'm going to tell Dolly, check her DMs. She, she don't be on Instagram at all like that, though. I know this, yes. Like, literally at all. But I'll tell her. All right, mama. Hello, who's this? Yo, what's up, fellas? What's up, Angela? What up? MD? What it's up? Marty Grace. What's poppin', Marty Grace? Marty Grace. What's, What's happening? Up, Get it off your chest. I'm good. How y'all? Good. How are you? Blessed, black, yeah, and highly favored, sir. Good. I wanted to give y'all a health alert. So I had a mini stroke in my left eye because my cholesterol was really high mm-hmm. and I was stressed out. <clears throat> so I want everybody to know y'all need to check y'all cholesterol and make sure y'all cholesterol it was from eating mcdonald's like every day for the last two years during the pandemic yeah that that, that, that would do it sir you know i had high cholesterol before when i found out from my doctor when i got my um levels checked 
I had to make all kind of changes, but fortunately it got back to normal. But you're right, because you'll be on medication the rest of your life if you don't take exactly. care of it now. And by the way, you yeah. never seen the 2004 documentary Super Size Me? I mean, I'm not no. the I'm I'm not the highest grade of weed in the dispensary, but eating McDonald's every day for two years uh, is not something anybody would recommend for health purposes. I agree. I agree, man. So listen, y'all stay healthy. When y'all get a chance. I did the DMX remix with the same song about missing him for the memorial and Swiss, Swiss and Alicia listen to it and they freaking love it, man. So if you just Google Marty Grace DMX remix, the joint is fire, yo, for real. I think me and Swiss going to probably do a memorial song for him soon. Okay. All right. All right, listen, I love you guys. Stay healthy, man. Just keep doing what y'all doing, man. Stay blessed. All right, man. Have a good Thank one. I'm not going to lie. That feels like a spoof. I need to tell y'all something, man. I want to stay healthy. Tell y'all, I need y'all to stay healthy, man. Don't eat McDonald's for two years like I did. Okay. <laughs> All right. We won't. I think we know that. Should we drink some water, too? Maybe a little bit. Hello, who's this? Hey, hey good morning. Good morning. This is Brian Shepard calling from right off of Georgia. What up? Get it off your chest. Yes, sir, man. Oh, like, shout out to you guys. Uh, Charlemagne the God, Angela Yee, hey. DJ Envy. Yes, sir. I uh, appreciate your guy for supporting the black community and small, supporting small black businesses. Um, I have my own small black business called Reliable Lawn Care down here in Valley, Georgia. Just trying to give it a shout out and get myself together. You know, um, I just got my LLC, my EIN, working on my Dove number. Yes. You know, just, just trying to come up with something, man. Just. Okay. Keep working, my brother. Keep working. Well, how can people get in touch with you if they need some help with their lawn service and lawn maintenance? Well, I'm in Valley, Georgia, uh, down south Georgia. Uh, you can reach me on Facebook at capital R, Reliable, capital L, Lawn, Start, lawn Care 2, all that together at Facebook. Um, my name is Brian Shepard on Facebook. You can contact me on Facebook at Brian Shepard. Mess me anytime. All right, um, bro. Yeah, man, if you guys want to support me, man, I really appreciate that. And just being on the platform is good, too. So, okay. Thank you, brother. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. We got rumors on the way. Yes, and of course, we are going to say a rest in peace to DJ K. Slay. Uh, we'll give you some details as far as what we know of how he passed away at the age of 55. All right, we'll get into that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Listen up. It's just in. All the gossip. Gossip. The Rumor Report. Gossip. With Angela. Angela Yee. It's The Rumor Report. The Breakfast Club. Well, a big rest in peace to DJ K. Slay and condolences to his family and friends. He was only 55 years old and he passed away for, he was hospitalized with COVID for about four months and he passed away yesterday. His death was confirmed by Van Silk, who has been a friend of his and known him since he was 16 years old. He described him as my dear brother and a lot of people pay their respect and tribute. Static Selecta said, I have so much to say, so many stories. This week's show off radio will be special. R.I.P. K. Slay. Terminology said, R.I.P. DJ K. Slay. Words cannot describe how much of a legend he was and what he meant to our culture. And 55 is young. Mm-hmm. Appreciate your life every day. That's why I tell y'all, wake up every day, take a deep breath, you know, for those who, who can't anymore. So sending healing energy to K. Slay and his family. Absolutely. We came in the um, mixtape game and in the, the DJ game together uh, at around the same time, I should say. And uh, great dude, man. He put a lot on for, for the streets, a lot on for independent artists, a lot on for, for, for so many different things. He created his, his own magazine, his own clothing line. He's He had his own record label. Of course, if you didn't know, he a Papoose was signed to him. He found Papoose. So definitely rest in peace to K. Slay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he started off as a graffiti artist before he pursued a career in music. He was featured mm-hmm. in the 1983 hip-hop documentary Style Wars, which looked at the hip-hop subculture across New York. He said he had never intended to become a DJ, but he said doing mixtapes began to brighten his life up after a stint in prison. Now, did uh, he have any underlying conditions? Um, I don't know. I That's don't not know. clear. but. Mm. I know that they had been talking about him being in the hospital for a while. His brother had said he was getting better and he was in recovery. And then, unfortunately, he did pass away. All right. Jocelyn's cabaret dancers have filed a $25 million lawsuit for what they are saying is an alleged premeditated assault following the reunion fight. According to reports, four dancers are suing and the women allege that Jocelyn planned to assault them when they arrived for the show's reunion. Uh, Jocelyn was on social media. She has since deleted this tweet. I mortal combat one hope. Pimp slapped another one, pushed one into last night's episode, kicked down a few on the ground. I slapped fire out of everyone on that stage. Me and my crew, wait for it. Jeez. Now, if you're a lawyer, how do you defend that when it's on camera and your client says she mortal combat at a hoe? How do you defend that if you're a lawyer? 
I'm not sure. Now, previously, Zeus Network President Lemuel Plummer has said no claims have been filed regarding Jocelyn's cabaret, so that may have um, actually changed now. Now, Jocelyn has tweeted out that being on a reality show made cast members ineligible to take legal action. So I don't know what kind of contract that's, they signed. That's not true. Uh, I would say I have a question though. Are they suing Jocelyn or are they suing the suing the TV network? Well, according to this right now, they are suing Jocelyn for twenty five million. Mm hmm. Do these shows have insurance? I doubt it, right? Because people they know have that to have. networks have insurance. Mm, that's All interesting because insurance. folks fight on these shows. At least, at least I mean, this is a a, diff- a screaming platform. So I just wonder because they know that fighting is a part of this show. So would you insure it, knowing that it's a risk of? Uh, and I also wonder if, if they might make, make you sign something that says that in case anything happens, they're not they're liable. They're not liable. I'm sure they do. Well, a network, I'm sure, does, because the network probably buys it from whoever that production company is, so they have nothing to do with it. They just buy and then put it on air. So it's probably whoever that production company that filmed that probably does, right? It has to have insurance. I don't know. Mm-hmm. All right, we'll see how that plays out. And Tasha Smith has recently secured a starring role in Lee Daniels' upcoming horror movie called Demon House. I'm so excited for this one. Now, um, we already know that this is the one that Monique was also cast for. Mm -hmm. And she had actually taken the place of Octavia Spencer, who was originally cast in a starring role, but had to leave the film due to scheduling conflicts. You see the two of them reunited. So that's going to be huge for people to see. Andrea Day is in that as well. She's going to be best friends with Tasha Smith's character in that. So that's going to be something really dope to see. It feels, uh, feels like a great thing. All right. Well, I'm Angela Yee, and that is your rumor report. All right. Thank you, Miss Yee. Now we got front page news next. What are we talking about? Yes. A mass shooting in South Carolina. That suspect has been arrested. All right. We'll get into that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. I teamed up with Zyrtec for this allergy relief message. Springtime brings vibrancy to the air and pollen. So I take Zyrtec when allergy symptoms start. Save the tissues and live vibrantly with Zyrtec. Starts working at hour one and stays strong day after day. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Let's get some, uh, some front page news. All right, NBA. Y'all watched the games last night? Yes, I, I did. I watched my Brooklyn Nets. I lose to the Celtics. The Celtics beat the Nets 115-114. Uh, the Bucks beat the Bulls 93-86. And who else I went to there? sleep on that one. I went to sleep Sun on the Suns Pelicans. Suns Pelicans 110-99. Yeah, I went to sleep on the Suns Pelicans. That was the West Coast games a little too late. Mm-hmm. Now what else we got, Yeezy? All right, well, don't forget taxes are due today, by the way. So if you haven't done your taxes, you got to get no. them in. Either they have to be stamped today or you can go online to irs.gov. And they have redesigned their website to make it more user-friendly so taxpayers can navigate and find information more easily. They've also added a new individual account that allows taxpayers to keep track of their personal information and tax status. They said the pandemic really gave them an opportunity to sit back and think about the journeys of taxpayers as they interact with the IRS. It's an opportunity to be innovative, but to also bring cohesion about around how we administer the taxes. I don't want you coming up with innovative ways for me to give my money away. Okay. But they said, well, some people get money back. And yeah. they and they God would love to people. do that because yes, they overpay God bless them. God bless them. during the year and they have uh, all kinds of uh, provisions to get some taxes back. So, you know, they do have a lot of backlog right now and they want to make sure they're improving taxpayers experience. But one thing I have to tell you, even if you're not ready, <laughs> file that extension because the uh, last thing you want to do is do nothing. There's only one way to improve a taxpayer's experience, and that is to not have me pay taxes at all. There's no such thing as improving a taxpayer's experience. <laughs> I don't want to pay you the taxes to begin with, okay? Look, there's so many people that cannot wait for this time of the year to get their money back. So I know people are like, as soon as I get my tax return, this is what I'm about to do. Well, so. God bless those people. I'm talking about us taxpayers. Okay? They still pay taxes. They just get money back because well, they I'm overpay. Not. You getting money back? No. Oh, I'm not. okay. Well, you sound very excited. <laughs> I mean, I know a lot of people that are like waiting for their tax return check. Oh, so I God know bless those, those people. people are excited to file, and we want to make sure you get everything that you're supposed to get. Get all the tax credits that you might be eligible for. Get everything. All right. I'm sorry. God bless all those people. <laughs> sorry. I mean, I, we're eligible you guys for sound all of those. We're, we are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we are. 
All right, I now, am. police have arrested a suspect in the mass shooting that happened at a South Carolina shopping mall. 14 people were injured, and panicked customers were fleeing for their lives, according to authorities. A gunman did open fire Saturday afternoon near the food court of the Columbiana Center Mall in Columbia, South Carolina, and they did arrest Joanne M. Price, a 22-year-old who was one of three people initially detained by law enforcement. He had been arrested uh, and charged with the unlawful carrying of a pistol. They said there will most likely be more charges after that. He's being held at a Lexington County Detention Center and and uh, like we said, 14 people were injured during the shooting. And I'm sure it was over nothing. And I'm sure the people that he was, uh, the people that got hit wasn't even his intended targets, probably. All right. Um, they said 14 people were injured. Two more than uh, police initially had reported. Nine of the victims were injured by the gunfire, while five suffered injuries such as broken bones, lacerations, and a head injury while attempting to flee the scene. Their age range of the victims are from 15 to 73 years old. Did they give a motive? I'm sure he was beefing with somebody. That's Not what it yet. seemed like. Yeah, he was beefing with somebody and they were shooting popped at each off. Other, they said, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what it made it that's seem like. That's what I heard. Like. I heard it was a... They were shooting at each other. They shooting at each other. They said, yeah, at least three people displayed firearms in the mall. At least two guns were used by two suspects. And police said they did seize at least one firearm, but they did say it represented an isolated incident that had to do with an unspecified ongoing conflict between two shooters. A.K.A. nothing. Now, nine nothing. people were also shot in a mass shooting at a South Carolina lounge in Furman, South Carolina. And this happened uh, Sunday, early Sunday morning, according to the South Carolina Law Enforcement Division. And here is what one person had to say who was an eyewitness. We was just in the club having a good time and shots just let out. It, did, it didn't happen inside the club. so it I was, think it was somebody had planned because they shot from the back from of the, the back club. Of the, club from so. the back of the club. All right. They said that uh, it was an Easter bash when the shots rang out and people were inside and outside the lounge when the shooting started. Some had to jump into nearby ditches to avoid being That's hit. That's so crazy. They said it was scary. We were just trying to get to safety. We didn't know where the shots were coming from. Yeah, it's crazy how a shooting at a club is considered a mass shooting nowadays. He's growing up, that was just another night at the night at the club. You know, yeah. sadly. But fortunately, there were no fatalities in either incident as of yesterday. All right. Well, that is your front page news. Man, I thank God. You think about all these shootings in the last couple of weeks and and people getting shot close range and nobody dying. You just thank God that nobody died. What happened in Brooklyn and South Carolina. Think about all the times you've been in the club. I mean, I'm from South Carolina. So think about all the times you've been in the club and, you know, seen shootings, Mm -hmm. wild shootings, wild, wild west type stuff. Mm -hmm. And you made it home. Just a regular night. Yeah. All right. Wow. And that is your front page news. Now, when we come back, what were you talking about? You light skin Keisha? Yes, uh, light skin Keisha had posted about her man and how no matter what, if she's turning up with her friends and her man call and want to see her, she's out. I could be out with my friends and we could be having a blast. But the minute that my man calls, hello, you said what? You want me to come with? I'm out. Me and turn up. I'm out. Period. Uh, you always with him. You was just with him. I, I don't care. I'm going to be with him. And I'm going to be with him again after that. And again after that. And again after that. Because that's my man. I'm out. Turn up with y'all later. I'll see y'all later. Let's let's talk about it. 800-585-1051. What are your thoughts? Me personally. If my mm-hmm. wife calling me for something. If that's, your man something call important. you what? I said, if my wife is calling me for something. <laughs> that's you, my out. man. I'm if, out. If she calls me for something, <laughs> that means it's important. I could be in the middle of doing a layup on the layup line. I don't see nothing wrong <laughs> with what she said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know? Was, but we don't know that's important. What if he's like, hey, come meet me here? My wife ain't going to do that. It's going. It's got to be okay, important. Okay, so it has to be important. Because she didn't specify if it was important or not. I'm be honest with you. I don't care if it's important or not. If she calls, if my wife calls me and tells me she wants me to be somewhere. In... By the way, if she is calling me to say that, then I know it's important. Right? She don't have to tell me it's important. Right. If she If she know I'm in the middle of doing something, she know I'm doing something, and she calls me for that, then yes, it must be important. I could be. And actually, that's going to scare me even more. It's going to scare me even more that she won't tell me over the phone what yes. it is. It's yeah. like, like, no, I need you to come right now. Like, ugh, okay. I could be in the middle of this break. I will leave this break right now. I'm out. But well, right. what if? But what if it's just a hey, come meet me here for we're grabbing something to eat. I probably still leave. That's still about to okay. yeah, I'm out <laughs> to yeah. what I'm so doing. Not like it's an emergency. Obviously, if it's an emergency, anybody. Should I leave probably still business. leave because I'm probably not doing anything anyway. Nothing. Like, yeah, that's time with your significant yeah. other. She ain't gonna call me in the middle of the show, but like, hey, let's go get a bite to eat. 
But we also say in our wives. She said her man. I don't know how long she's been with her man. They're engaged. Oh, that's beautiful then. Yes. Now let's talk about I it. 800 585 What are your thoughts? It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. It's topic time. Call 800-585-1051 to join into the discussion with The Breakfast Club. Talk about it. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Now, if you just joined us, uh, we were talking about light-skinned Keisha Yee. Now, what's going on with light-skinned Keisha? Yes, yeah, she did this post where she was saying that she don't care if she's turning up with her friends. If her man calls, she's out. All right, so we're asking 800-585-1051. What are your thoughts on this? I, I told you already, my wife calls, I'm coming. It's a, if something's happening, it, it is what it is. If she calls, no matter what I'm doing, I could be in the middle of a baseball game, basketball game, middle on air. I could be middle of whatever, peeing. I'm on my way. Oh, okay. Um, I don't know Light Skin Keisha. Salute to her. Uh, but she didn't make it seem like she's doing anything pressing. She said she's out with her friends and her dude calls and she wants to be out. That's her prerogative. I don't even understand why that's a debate. She's doing what she feels like doing. God bless her. I feel the same way. If my wife calls me and tells me she wants to see me, if my wife hits me and tells me I need to be home, I'm out. Everything I do is business anyway. So if I'm not at home, I'm at... One of my business ventures, and if I have to bounce for the wife, I'm out. I do it all the time now. Wife, kids, nothing comes before them. What about <laughs> like, you, Yee? You out with your girls, I your mean, I, calls? I think it depends. If it's like um, an emergency and my man's like, yo, I need you to come here now. But I don't think my boyfriend would do that to me. Like, I don't think that if he knew I was with my friends and seeing them, he would just call me and tell me to leave them unless it was an emergency. Now, if he's, I, but I do know women who, when we go out, Every time we go out there, man calls them, and then next you know they're outside on the phone arguing, or they're like, "Oh, I gotta go. He's doing this," and it just be for no reason. So if it's a reason behind it, yes, I get it. But I also feel like, you know, sometimes if my friend is celebrating something, or if they're by themselves and I'm with them, and I want to leave you just to go see my man, just because he's like, "I feel like seeing you now." I would be like, "All right, well, I'm gonna be done in like an hour, or I'll wrap it up quicker, but I'm not gonna just leave." Well, I mean, those are a lot of different circumstances. I mm-hmm. didn't get none of that context from what Keisha said. She just, yeah, it's a lot of... She didn't give full context. Yeah, I don't know. That's she, why I'm saying it depends. I guess that's the, that would be... A, we have to mo- have more context to what are you actually leaving, I guess. Let's go to the phone lines. Hello, who's this? This is Ebony. Ebony, good morning. So what's your thoughts, Ebony? My thought is this. No one likes the girlfriend who ditches her friends just because she got a... No a girl... Well, your phone is breaking up. If you could pick up. Your phone breaking up. Your man gonna break up with you too. <laughs> if you could pick up your phone. Your phone breaking up the way all those men broke you up, broke up with you uh, throughout life. Your phone is definitely ditching you. Hello. <laughs> is it better? Yes, that's better. <laughs> My phone is dogging me. <laughs> See, yeah. Oh, that's no, what they. No, just saying. Everyone hates that girl, the friend that does that. Like you get a man, and now you don't want to kick it with us anymore. Mm-hmm. That's not how it plays out. Ebony, there should be balance. You single, Ebony? Yes. Yes, I am. And I know you sound like it. And by the way, you know she has a. Fi- yeah, what she, do you she, sound like? She, she has a fiance. Okay, she has a fiance. And I mean, I, I, maybe mm-hmm. I shouldn't speak on this either because I'm married. And we, you speaking from no, the perspective of a married I man, it. it's like, different. You, y'all make it seem like just some true. man she just got with. But that's a fiance no. still though. But your fiance yeah. should no. respect if you're with your friends too, because it Thank is true. You. Like your yeah. friends are important also. So it's, it just depends on the situation and the circumstance. And I also would think that Thank this young lady, the young lady like Keisha, knows what circumstance she was in better than we do. So if it's a circumstance that she could that she's like, I'm hey, I'm out, I'm gonna be with my man. Clearly it wasn't it's, it's not that important. Cause sometimes your friends will look at it and be like, Well, she always leaving for her man, so why should I be there when she need me for something? And if the friends are single, don't listen to them. No. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> of course they mad. They ain't got no man to go home to. They ain't got nothing to do. <laughs> Hello, who's this? Hey, this is Antonio. What's good? What's good? Antonio, what's up? Talk to us, Antonio. All right, so uh I mean I'm gonna have to agree with Angela that it's easy to say that you see this is an important situation. But like, even though there's definitely a lot of people that wouldn't, but if it's important and you're not pulling up, I, I, I mean, I think you got to be on a sneaky link or something. I mean, I don't know. A sneaky link. Suspect. What happened here? What happened? What happened? What, what happened? What happened here? Sneaky what link, like you, you meeting up with somebody else that you ain't supposed to be meeting up with. Y'all doing something, you know, like something like that. I don't like even that. know what you're talking about yeah, right yeah. now. All we said is, if you with your boys and your girl calls, are oh, you going to leave? That's what we asked That's you, it. Or if you're with your girls and your boy, your guy call, are you going to leave? We don't All need right, no one confessions. More one more time. All right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right. So Angela Angela said earlier that it's like, it's easy to say that you would leave your boys if it's like an important situation, right? But like... Bro, are you leaving or not? That's the question. Up, are you, you, you leaving or not? Let him talk. <laughs> he, he's not. Ask him if you got a girlfriend. You got a girlfriend? 
I don't. I don't. Exactly. <laughs> All these single people calling up and y'all ain't even. Uh, he was so confused. I get on my damn nerves. You talking about? Sneaky I hate nuts. all you single people with y'all hypotheticals. Like, let's talk some facts. Calm down. Okay. Calm down. Talk. To, I want to talk to people with fiancés and wives and husbands, committed relationships. Oh. How's he talking about? Hello, who's this? Hey, it's Doris. How you doing? Good morning. So we're asking if you're out with your girls and your man calls and says he wants to meet with you. Are you leaving your girls? Absolutely not. And I'll tell you why. I've been in so many relationships and I paid it the hard way. Lost friends and lost friends. And then when it came down to the man doing me dirty, where were all my friends at? Mm. Right. It depends on if it's a controlling situation where every time you're out with your friends, friends he's like, come on and meet me. Queen. No, that's I'm I mean, I'm married now. Good job. So it's a little, it's a little different. A lot different. But I, yeah, it's a lot different. But the thing is, it's good to have a balance between mm-hmm. friends and the man that you're with. If you know, because let's be real, this this day and age, relationships are really iffy. A lot of cheating we're seeing these days. People are so influenced by social media. Relationships are really, really iffy. So what about your husband? Your husband call you out? He don't do that. He used to. Mm. He knows when I'm out with my friends, it's girls time. He knows to leave me alone. Right. <laughs> you I need, just, back, you need your balance. I'm ready for my man. I'm, we're ready to spend time. We're ready to get down in the bedroom if needed because I had a couple drinks with my girls. It pays off. Healthy right. boundaries. Girls, okay. I like when my boyfriend calls me and says, hurry up, but not leave right away, but hurry up. And then I'd be like, okay, let me uh, slide out as fast as I can. All right. 800-585-1051. This conversation comes from Light Skin Keisha. This is what she said. I could be out with my friends and we could be having a blast. But the minute that my man calls, hello, you said what? You want me to come with? I'm out. Me and turn up. I'm out. Period. Uh, you always with him. You was just with him. I, I don't care. I'm going to be with him. And I'm going to be with him again after that. And again after that. And again after that, because that's my man. I'm out. Turn up with y'all later. I'll see y'all later. So we're asking, what are your thoughts? It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. I know it now. I know it now. I know it now. Call me. Add your opinion to The Breakfast Club top. Come on. 800-585-1051. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Now, if you just join us, we're talking about light-skinned Keisha. Now, she said this on her social media. I could be out with my friends and we could be having a blast. But the minute that my man calls, hello, you said what? You want me to come with? I'm out. Me and turn up. I'm out. Period. So we're asking 800-585-1051. What would you do? Hello, who's this? Yeah, it's Julian from the 212, but I'm in the 262. What's up, DJ Envy? Julian, what's up, man? Man, I would definitely do that in a heartbeat for my lady, of course. Okay. So if she calls you out, regardless of what it's for. Wh- whatever it's for, I- I'm I'm going. I'm going. I got to go, man. Like, she she deserves whatever it is for, for, for me, you know? Okay. Hello, who's this? Hey, my name is Anita. How are you? Good morning, Anita. Hey, Anita. Hi, everybody. How's everything? Good, Bless good, black good. and highly favored. So what are you doing, Anita? You you get a call from your significant other saying it's time. You get a call from your cat daddy. So what are you doing? You leaving or and, you staying with your girls? And I would purr right to him. <laughs> <laughs> would you leave church? Would you leave Easter Sunday service? Well, I would say to Father, please forgive me. Something might, he might need me, so I got to go. As long as God is still in my heart, I will go. Okay. Uh, like J.D. Snow says, find a man of your own and you'll see how it works. <laughs> what Jay Z song, song is that, man? What song is that? Ain't no man like the one I got. Okay. He said that in that song? Oh, I didn't know. I got to yeah. go back and check those lyrics. Okay. Yeah, All right. Jay Z and Fox. Oh, find a man yeah. of your own. Oh, that was, that was, yeah. Find a man of your own. Tell her to find a man of your own. Man of your own. Man of your own. Okay. Oh, got All right. you. Got That's you. Foxy. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that was first Jay Z. I feel you, Queen. I feel you. I feel you. Hello. Who's this? Kia. Hey, Kia. Good morning. Good morning, how y'all? I'm doing good. Peace, good. Kia. How are your you? Your man calls you and tell you, look, it's time. Bring your ass home. You you coming home or you staying with your girls? I'm going home. She said out partying. She ain't staying on business. So if my man want me to come home and I'm out partying, just having a good time, I'm going to have a better time with him. So I'm going to go home. What if it's one of your friends' birthday? Well, if it's their birthday and I got to cut out early, I came. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's true. I stopped through. I'm gonna be like, I gotta go. <laughs> now I say this is a, this is a, a this is a, a a good question, but it's random because you like you need more specifics. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like you need more you context need to it. Like what are you asking me to okay. leave again? But when she said, like she didn't say on business, she said like just out turning up. Right. So I yeah. could see if she was like on business and then everybody had kind of a little bit of a problem. But if you're out turning up and it's your mate and she's engaged, so this is the person she chose to be with for life. So he comes before those friends. I agree. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you, mama. Mm-hmm. What's the moral of the story, guys? I mean, the moral of the story is all your prerogative. Like, I'm not knocking nobody for what they choose to do, but I know if my wife calls me and I'm out, I'm going home. Especially if I ain't just, just out kicking it, doing nothing, which I don't do, but I don't see the problem with what she said. All right, now, we got rumors on the way? Yes, and we addressed these uh, Rihanna and ASAP Rocky rumors last week. Well, the writer who started those cheating rumors has now issued an apology. See, I don't like uh, Anyway, all right, we'll get to that next. It's the Breakfast Club. Oh, God. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Angela uh, Yee, Charlamagne the guy. We are the Breakfast <sighs> Club. Good morning. What's happening on this fine Monday morning? Y'all yawning and stretching like I am? I'm feeling huh? good. I hope you're feeling good, too. Trying to bounce back from the weekend. Took my old ass out in these streets. Was out till two thirty, three o'clock in the morning. Now that I think about it, though, I was only out for five hours because the comedy, the uh, Andrew Schultz's show, started at ten, ten thirty, so it was a little after ten thirty, and then I was only out till about two thirty, three o'clock. Damn, about two thirty, about four hours. Yeah, about four hours, but that's a lot when you're old. And I'm telling you, man, either these drinks done got stronger, or I'm older. Because it don't take me much nowadays. My goodness. Uh, shout to uh, Jasmine from the Jasmine brand. I'm going to be with her tonight at Mahogany Books in D.C. So if you're in the DMV area, come on out. Okay, okay. Be, uh, me and the wife are going to be talking to Jasmine. She's going to be uh, interviewing us live on stage talking about the book. And then we're going to be doing a book signing after the book comes out, of course, tomorrow, April 19th. So uh, if you haven't pre-ordered it, uh, you can still pre-order it today or pick it up tomorrow. So D.C. Mahogany Books, black-owned bookstore. So we'll be chopping it up later on tonight, this evening. Shout out to my girl Mahogany Jasmine. Mahogany Books. That's yeah. my homie right there. The same, about that. the same Sharpie that Envy will be using the autograph books he used to clearly draw his beard and hairline in this week. Big week, though, so I can I understand right all the paint. I have it right now. Big week so I can understand all the paint. The book and comes out this week. Gia will be on our special guest tomorrow, right? Yeah, Gia's going to be on The Breakfast Club tomorrow. I think she's doing lip service this week. Yes, she is doing lip service as well. Yeah, so. and we're doing Good Morning America Let today. me apologize oh, in advance. Oh, drop one of Clues bombs for the Casey. Yeah. That's why that paint's so fresh. Oh, I goodness. knew the book was coming out tomorrow, so I knew the paint was going to be fresh, oh, but now goodness. I understand that new paint job you got this <laughs> well, morning. congratulations. Good, Good morning, reading America. The book, okay. I decided to be nice. Okay. I decided to be nicer to Envy after okay. reading his book. Oh, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Good Morning America uh, today, I think... Uh, I think we got Fox tomorrow. Good morning, Fox News. Now, it's, oh man, see, I'm telling you, we got a bunch. Of, we got a bunch of stuff lined up, so we're gonna be hitting the town, and we in LA this week. We go, we're all over. We're trying to hit every bookstore and talk to many people as possible. Just like a lace front, oh, paint job goodness. looks stupid in person, but on TV, drop on the clues bombs. It's gonna look <laughs> on TV. What is wrong? It's gonna with look you? so crisp in HD. Lace fronts oh, and them painted on beards and them ha- f- uh, fake headlines look stupid in person, but on TV, mwah. I don't know what well, you're talking about. Well, congratulations. Thank you so much. If you. you haven't pre-ordered the book now, and I can't wait for you guys to read it, and I know a lot of you guys have been getting your book so far, so uh, we'd love to talk to you about it. All right. Now we got our rumors on the way? Yes, Coachella was over the weekend, and we'll tell you some of the highlights. All right. We'll get into that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. This is The Rumor Report with Angela Yee. Rumor has it. On The Breakfast Club. So listen up. Nah, 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 nah. All right. Well, things got a little crazy, and everybody was talking about these cheating rumors. There was a rumor that ASAP Rocky was cheating on Rihanna, and people felt like it was credible because it came from uh, somebody that was in the mix. The person who started the rumor is a fashion influencer and a writer named Louis Pisano. He has since issued an apology for starting the breakup rumors. Now, he released a statement. He said, I'm not going to talk about sources, blame others for a discussion that was started, etc. Because at the end of the day, I made the decision to draft that tweet, press send, and put that out with my name on it. So I'd like to formally apologize to all parties I involved with my actions and for my reckless tweets. I fully accept the consequences of my actions from... 
uh, my tweets and any harm they cause. I have no excuse for it. I've been way too wrapped up in Twitter drama and unfortunately leans into being messy as a brand, which is something going forward I'm going to move away from. I'm going to take some time away from Twitter to figure out what that looks like and how I can start using my platforms better as I've gotten away from using them for more positive work. Again, I apologize to them for this unnecessary drama. Now, the cheating rumors, he had accused uh, ASAP Rocky of cheating on this woman, Amina Moadi, who is a shoe designer who has collaborated with Rihanna previously for the 2020 Fenty Shoe Collection. She has since responded. She said, I've always believed that an unfounded lie spread on social media doesn't deserve any response or clarification, especially one that is so vile. I initially assumed that this fake gossip fabricated with such malicious intent would not be taken seriously. However, in the last 24 hours, I've been reminded that we live in a society that is so quick to speak on topics regardless of factual basis and that nothing is off limits, not even during what should be one of the most beautiful and celebrated times in one's life. Therefore, I have to speak up as this is not only directed towards me, but it is related to people I have a great amount of respect and affection for while Rhea is continuing to live her serene, best-dressed pregnancy life, and I go back to my business. Yeah, me is owed a million apologies because I can only imagine what her funny. weekend yeah, was like. Absolutely. And sadly, the truth never goes around the world like the lie does because nobody cares about the truth when the lie is more entertaining. But for no reason? Just to wake up on a <laughs> Tuesday and say, I'm just going to start this this rumor that's going to hurt somebody's lives? That's why every rumor don't need to be nah, repeated. Me. And, you know, we can't sit here and act like, you know, just in general as a culture, we don't pick and choose which rumors to run with, but folks tend to run with them depending on how big the celebrity is attached to them. Can you imagine that lady's mental? Oh, come on, man. I'm sure that she got dragged. Her social media and all that stuff. And then sure. Rihanna being pregnant and having to deal with all this on social media and ASAP Rocky Ain't having funny. to but be this, like, this isn't true. Like, all of them. But this is, why, this is why I feel like you shouldn't repeat it. If you Like, if we feel that way, if we know she's pregnant and everything else and we don't believe the rumor, why repeat it? Like, why well, give it any validation? Well, she felt the need to address it herself because it was so widespread. It was um, everywhere. Yeah, because because certain outlets picked it up, like that outlets that should have credibility. But started what, talking about. But what it. makes you wake up like on a Wednesday morning and say, you know what I'm gonna do today? I'm gonna start this show with ASAP and Rihanna. How and am I'm I gonna, gonna get these retweets without it, Envy? How am I gonna get these likes without it? Like why? Like okay. what made you do that? Because they keep asking me on Facebook, what do you have to say? What do they say? What is it on Twitter? Yeah. Do you have something to say? Whatever it is, they ask you the question on Twitter. What do you want to say? I guess you got to answer it sometime. All right, now Meg Thee Stallion debuted a new song at Coachella over the weekend, and this has not been heard prior to this. Here it is. Ladies, love yourself. Why I keep going in and out? Because the dirty of the version. Curses? Oh, <laughs> that's the dirty version. They should have reversed it. In the sound. Exactly. Yeah. They they should have reversed I thought that was the Coachella footage. I was like, what's going on? No, no, they should have reversed it. There's a lot of cursing it. and naughty words. But yes, so there you go. That was uh, actually trending over the weekend. Little Kim's name was trending along with this as well. I mean, why was Little Kim's name trending? I think because you hear the way she starts it off, it kind of sounds oh, it like Oh, Little Kim's verse, yeah. Yeah, version. Yeah. It I'm, was pr given props, you know. I'm shocked Nothing that it bad. took someone 27 years to rap over one of the greatest R&B remixes of all time. Personally, my favorite R&B remix of all time, Jodeci Freaking You Remix featuring featuring Raekwon the Chef and Ghostface Killer. Mm -hmm. Now also Isaiah Rashad was performing at Coachella and he did uh, put up a pre-recorded film before his performance, a collage of media footage and audio and people reacting to a video of him leaked this year where they show him being intimate with other men and here is what he posted or he That's showed. Isaiah Rashad, rapper on TDE, recently had a video get leaked with him and two men. The purpose of doing that was to try to embarrass him. But, however, um, it backfired. When his video leaked, his streams and everything went up. Mm -hmm. He's up on the charts now. All right, so during the set, he also thanked his fans for their messages of positivity. He said they kept him alive these last couple of months. Hey, I see all the messages and all that sh All the positivity. Y'all niggas have kept me alive these last couple of months. I'm dropping the clues bombs for Isaiah Rashad. The man's living his life. Mm-hmm. Nothing wrong with that. All right, but I guess people were trying to use that against him, trying to out him, embarrass him, and didn't work like that. Mm -hmm. All right, well, that is your rumor reports. All right, thank you, Miss Yee. Charlamagne, who are you giving that down to? Hey, man, for after the hour, let's talk boundaries, okay? And what happens when those boundaries are violated? There is a price to that. 
We'll All discuss right. for after the hour. We'll get to that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. Hey, it's Angela Yee. Have you taken a look at the general insurance lately? Switch to the general and you could save over $500 on your car insurance. Call 800-GENERAL or visit thegeneral.com. The General Auto Insurance Services, Inc., an insurance agency, Nashville, Tennessee. Some restrictions apply. I was born a donkey. It's the donkey of the day. Donkey, donkey, donkey. That's time for the donkey of the day. That's pretty really fun. Charlemagne the devil? Possibly. <laughs> the Breakfast Club. Yes. Donkey of the day for Monday, April 18th goes to Gravity Diagnostics in Covington, Kentucky. All right, this donkey of the day today is near and dear to my heart because at the top of the year, I made a commitment to myself that 2022 is the year of boundaries. Okay, if you have never read the incredible New York Times bestselling book, Set Boundaries, Find Peace, do yourself the biggest favor and go do that. It is by uh, Nedra Glover Tawab. She's been a guest here on The Breakfast Club. She's been a guest on my weekly show on Comedy Central. Uh, The book, Set Boundaries, Find Peace, is a guide to reclaiming yourself. Okay. She has a set boundaries workbook that you can purchase with the book as well. And the reason I love this book is it because it, it because it's because it gives you the language to express what it is you may be feeling in regards to having boundaries. OK, what does setting healthy boundaries look like to you, whether it's work, relationships, smoking a joint, anything that has to do with other people? Boundaries have to be set, which is why I realized uh, one reason, that's one reason I don't like to be outside, okay? I took my old ass in these streets this past weekend to see my guy Andrew Schultz uh, sell out Radio City Music Hall here in New York City. Two shows, 12,000 people, and I went to the second show. The reason I went to the second show is because he was having an after party. I'm like, okay, I'm going to lay on the couch all day Saturday, get these, naps in so I can, get these naps in so I can be ready for the night's festivities. And what I realized about myself is after this pandemic, I am very socially awkward okay especially in a nightlife setting and you know why because i told y'all in 2022 that's the year of boundaries for me and i don't know if y'all know or not but there are no healthy boundaries you can set in a club okay in fact you actually look like a complete jerk setting boundaries in a club if you don't want to be bothered why in the hell would you be at a club if you want to be tucked away in a little section with just you and your friends you could be doing that in the living room at your house okay or one of your friends house you can't really set boundaries at a club or any setting where you are there to be social and i need my boundaries now i'm saying all that to say the place where boundaries can be set is at work Okay, in fact, work is the place other than your relationship where you can set the most boundaries and healthy boundaries are absolutely a necessity in the workplace. And Kevin Burling of Kentucky laid out a boundary for his manager at Gravity Diagnostics. In fact, it was a very simple request. And the request was he asked him not to celebrate his birthday at work. Well, Gravity Diagnostics did not respect their employees' wishes, and they threw a birthday party anyway. And man, because of that, Kevin Burling got the greatest B-Day gift of his life. Let's go to WKRC Local 12 for the report, please. Kevin Burling had worked at Gravity Diagnostics for about 10 months in 2019, and because he suffers from anxiety disorders and panic attacks, he asked the company not to celebrate his birthday as it normally does for its workers. And that's when things started to go south. According to the lawsuit filed in Kenton County, the office manager forgot his request and still held a birthday party for Burling. That triggered a panic attack, and he left and spent his lunch hour in his car. His bosses held a meeting about the incident, triggering another attack. At that point, company managers told him to leave for the weekend and then subsequently fired him, telling him they were worried about him being angry and possibly becoming violent. Burling declined interview requests. His lawyer, Tony Bucher, says the company apparently was more concerned about others than his client's well-being. A jury believed Burling and this week awarded him $450,000 in damages, including $300,000 for mental anguish. Mm. I want my money. Okay, in fact, since y'all want to celebrate B-Days, and I told y'all not to, put it all in a birthday card. Write the check for the 450 and put it in a birthday card, okay? Everybody not with all that noise on their B-Day. That man told y'all I didn't want no cake, I don't want no balloons, I don't want everybody gathering around singing me happy birthday, even if it's the Stevie Wonder version. And it was Kentucky, so you know it wasn't the Stevie Wonder version. Okay, you don't know what the reasons were for not wanting to celebrate his born day, all right? Kevin might have had religious reasons. Maybe he just didn't rock with y'all like that and would rather do that with his friends and loved ones. And actually, he did have a reason. His reason was because he said a B-Day celebration would bring back childhood memories surrounding his parents' divorce. Look, 
He don't even owe y'all an explanation. He told y'all he didn't want no birthday celebration. Y'all can debate all day on whether this man overreacted or not, but there is no such thing as an overreaction when I set a boundary and you overstep said boundary. Okay, and these are actually the worst boundaries to overstep because this is really all about you. You think that what you are doing, you know, for me is so great that it has to be done. Therefore, you're not really thinking about me. You're thinking about yourself and how it's going to make you look and how it's going to make you feel. You're not thinking about me. So now eat this lawsuit and run me my 450000 OK? All boundary violations aren't physical. Most are mental and emotional. Kevin said his supervisor chastised him for stealing his co-worker's joy. And for him and Carl Kevin said, stop, told him, stop being a little girl. Look at those keywords, stealing his co-worker's joy. What about my joy? It's my birthday. You don't care about me, you care about yourself. Imagine going to someone on their birthday and saying, if you don't let us have a party for you, then you will be stealing our joy. Come on, man, the nerve. When someone oversteps your boundaries, they are letting you know that what you want doesn't matter. Let me tell y'all something else. No is a complete sentence. And you know what else is a complete sentence? Run me my money. Okay? Please give Gravity Diagnostics in Kentucky the sweet sounds of the Hamiltons. Oh, now you are the donkey mm. of the day. Ooh, you are the donkey of the day. Yeehaw. All right. Thanks. Kevin Berlin, get your coins. Every red cent, all the money. Thank you for that donkey of the day. Yes, 450000 So let's talk boundaries. 800-585-1051. What are we asking about boundaries this morning? I don't think Kevin's wrong at all. I know that the uh, uh, the, the gravity diagnostics is trying to dispute it, of course, because nobody wants to come up off that kind of money. But when somebody tells you no, that's a complete sentence, period. Don't act like you're doing me any favors. And it's not even about Kevin. This was about that supervisor. He just wanted to have a goddamn party, clearly. And if you wanted to have a party, you should have just had an employee appreciation day party or something. Okay. Let's talk boundaries. 800-585-1051. Was Kevin right? Is that, that, is that what we're asking? Yes. Okay. Was Kevin right to sue for this? All right. And you can't say the man overreacted. The man won his lawsuit. $450,000. If you call up here saying he was overreacting, you're probably hating because you didn't think of it first. <laughs> All the times you sat in that damn lobby with those people and they singing happy birthday to you and you don't even like your co-workers. Okay? Bring you them stale ass cupcakes from, from Bilo or Publix, Piggly Wiggly, somewhere. Can I sue up here? For what? I'm sure y'all sing me happy birthday now they want it. I've never sang you happy birthday. I could sue you for coming in here with that Sharpie draw it on beard every you know morning. What? That's a violation of my boundaries. 800 585 you just going to throw your hairstylist at me? <laughs> He's doing Sharpie at me. I'm just going to throw your hairstylist at me. <laughs> it's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. It's topic time. Call 800-585-1051 to join into the discussion with The Breakfast Club. Talk about it. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Now, if you just joined us, we're talking about Charlamagne's Donkey of the Day. Yes, Donkey of the Day uh, went to Gravity Diagnostics in, in Kentucky. They were sued by an employee, Kevin Burling, because Kevin asked him not to celebrate my B-Day. I guess they're one of those companies that, you know, they do the whole big song and dance, you right. know, the whole big, you know, performance thing whenever it's somebody's b-day and he said he didn't want that and they did it to him anyway and not only did they do it to him he said that a supervisor said to him you're stealing uh your co-workers joy and called him a little girl so he ended up suing and getting four hundred and fifty thousand dollars. that's a great birthday present. all right now i think it's a great birthday now present. this is the thing like, I, I get being upset but suing for four hundred fifty thousand dollars? Well, they call them a little girl and all of that. That's like next level, you know. Just because I don't want to have a birthday, and then you don't know what his reasons are. Well, he said he said his reasons were it would bring back a lot of childhood trauma yeah. from um from uh watching from his parents' divorce, right? If so, somebody tells you that, then just let it go. Yeah, my thing is, it doesn't matter what his reasoning is. No means no. And all boundaries aren't all boundary violations aren't physical. If I tell you no and you overstep my boundary and you cause me emotional distress because of it, hey, now you're gonna get this lawsuit. But Everybody don't like that. 000? Yes, man. It's Jeez. stupid. You know what I hate? I hate when it's your birthday and you know you go into a restaurant, one of them restaurants that come over and do the clapping yeah, and bring yeah, it. Yeah. Don't do that. 
We ain't got to do all that. You know what I'm saying? So I respect his boundary. All right, I well. think you just mad that you ain't never thought of it first because you done thought of every other way to get money out of these people. <laughs> <laughs> you done thought of every other way to get a lawsuit going in. You ain't never thought about this one, huh? I ain't going to lie. I never thought about this one. <laughs> now you hating. <laughs> Hello, who's this? This is Fresh from Florida. Hey, what's up, bro? What, what, what's your thoughts? Man, I thought I think it, I think it goes both ways because you got some companies that don't even care that it's your birthday. Like they won't even say happy birthday or buy you nothing. But I also feel where he coming from about he didn't want it either. So it kind of goes both ways. All right, just send me an email or something. Send an email. How about send out an email just saying, "Hey, today is Kevin Burling's happy uh, birthday. We just want to wish him a happy birthday. That's it." I mean, yeah, but I mean, like, but just think about it. I mean, because I've been listening to you guys for a long time. I'm a big fan of yours, Charlamagne, and Jim, DJ, DJ MV. I like, I'm, I listen to your wife podcast, and but like I was saying, but it's, too, it's sir. both things. It goes both ways. All right, I appreciate you, King. So let me ask you a question. So do you think he's gonna get triggered by you talking about it again? That's bringing up all the birthday memories again, and now he can sue you? Why would he sue me? I don't know. I'm giving Donkey today. I agree with him. I'm giving Donkey today the gravity diagnostics, and it's not even about anything else other than violating the boundary. Respect people's boundaries when they tell you they don't want something. Don't be pushy about it because you never know what their reason is all behind it. So I'm not mad at them. No, somebody was mad at you. They just hung up. He was mad at you. He said you overstepped your boundaries. When you started talking bad about uh, what Publix cupcakes, he said, "Watch your mouth when it comes to Publix, <laughs> Publix cupcakes." <laughs> <laughs> That's what he was mad about. <laughs> so don't talk about he Publix hung up cupcakes. I man. didn't say they were bad. I just said that nobody wanted them. And, and listen, by the way, there's no thought that goes into getting cupcakes from Publix. Why not? I guarantee. Listen, I promise you, when they, when they bring you cupcakes from Publix or any grocery store, they've just scrambled and remembered it's your birthday. Went out and got something real quick and bought some candles to do that. Guaranteed. Goodness gracious. Hello, who's this? Nicole. Good morning. Nicole, good morning, good Nicole. Morning. What are your thoughts, Nicole? So my thoughts are, you know, Charlemagne is completely right, as as per usual, right? Don't say <laughs> that now. Personal... I'm getting tricked. Hush, this no. woman has taste. <laughs> no, I listen every morning. I listen every morning. He has very valid points, right? Any Anyone with a, a minuscule of intelligence. So on this topic... Right. Personal boundaries haven't been respected long before the pandemic. I was just saying, basically, like, you know, if, if I tell you to stay away from me, it means stay away from me. If I tell you I don't want to celebrate my birthday, if you leave me alone intentionally. Right. I've been at the grocery store and people come near me with their cart and I'm like, you're way too close. Like people have no respect for personal boundaries. None right. whatsoever. I believe if you invade my personal space and I have directly told you not to, you get what's coming to you, whether it's a verbal lashing, a physical altercation ensues, whatever it is, it is. But I've asked you not to be in my personal space. You invaded it anyways. Be prepared for the consequences. I respect it. $450,000. That's right. Run me that money. So let me ask you a question. So when, when when that little video was going out with Will Smith and people said, Will Smith was bugging. You remember, you know the video with Will and Jada? Jada said she didn't want a birthday party. And Will threw the birthday party. It was extravagant. He had Mary J. Blige perform. And people was like, she was all oh, that, oh, that's a perfect example. Right. Because Will said that was all. Of, Will said he was feeding his ego. Will said he wasn't listening to his wife. Correct. When his wife told him she ain't need all of that. You know what I mean? So Will said yeah. he did that. And it was uh, it was it was for his ego. Mm. He said he so you're right. What's the problem? He violated Jada's boundaries. All right. 800 585 1051 What are your thoughts? It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. I know it now. I know it now. I know it now. Call me. Add your opinion to the Breakfast Club top. Come on. 800 585 1051 Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God. We are the Breakfast Club. Now, if you just join us, we're talking about uh, Charlemagne's Donkey today. Who you gave Donkey today to, Charlemagne? Donkey today went to Gravity Diagnostics in uh, Covington, Kentucky. Um, they violated one of their employees, Kevin Brayling's boundaries. He asked them not to do anything for his birthday, and they did it anyway. So he decided to sue. Uh, for emotional distress, and he won four hundred and fifty thousand dollars. They need to run that man his money for violating his boundaries. Period. No is a complete sentence. Twenty twenty two is the year of boundaries for me. I told y'all I read "Set Boundaries, Find Peace" at the end of last year by Nadra Tawab. Nadra's been up here on the Breakfast Club. She's been a guest on my weekly show on Comedy Central. Her book is about uh, a guy. It's a guide to reclaiming yourself by setting boundaries and finding peace. So I'm all about the boundaries, baby. All right, so let's go to the phone lines. Hello, who's this? My name is D. Hey, D, what are your thoughts? 
my thoughts about boundaries are, as a little girl, I didn't know I had OCD, but my mom did, so she separated my dishes from everyone's dishes, and, and they were mine. No one touched my dishes. Well, my sisters thought that was kind of special, so they would mess with my things. They knew I was a very neat person. I had no idea I had OCD, but now that I've been diagnosed as an adult, I still do the same thing with my family. Whenever I go shopping, I buy them what they want. I buy me my special things, and they know, do not touch my things. If they do, I go ballistic. And it's, it's been that way all my life, so now they understand why I'm that way. That's real. So I respect it. Yeah, and they respect it, but it's like some people think I think I'm better than they are because I'm the way I am, but I'm just a neat freak. And I clean everything around me. And they think, well, she, you know, who is she? But I have a condition, people. Right. Okay. I respect it. That's the other thing. We don't know what psychological issue someone That's is true. dealing with, especially anxiety. Because, you know, you, you know, it takes a lot for some people just to come to work. Just to come to work. Like, they got to, you know, just soup themselves up just to get in a good headspace to come to work and now you want to have a party and you singing happy birthday now I got a fake act like I like some of y'all and you know receive this I don't want it so no mm. I'm trying to think is there anything that I tell you guys not to do that you do anyway it's $450,000 is a lot of money you don't count why don't I count anybody comes in here looking as suspicious as you with that drawn on <laughs> beard if I didn't know you that's what if I didn't know you, I would call police. See, that, that's like, this guy looks suspicious. <laughs> yeah, like, suspicious. there's no way. You look like you're in disguise right now. <laughs> I'm suing. Watch. When y'all see him on Good Morning America is it this, this morning? Yes, this morning. When y'all see him on Good Morning America this morning, y'all going to know what I'm talking about. But nope. it's going to look really sharp on TV. Nope. But in person, suspicious. <laughs> Yo, I'm suing you. Hello, who's this? Hi, my name is Danny. Hey, Danny. Good morning. Hi, I'm wondering, how far does this boundary thing go? Because my therapist talks about herself all the time. Like, I can't get a word in edgewise. <laughs> what? Like that should be a boundary. I should be learning how to set boundaries. You maybe, you're her ther maybe you're her therapist. Maybe you're her therapist. Yeah, you should charge her. What, what kind of therapist right. do you have that, won't, that keeps talking about herself? Hold on. Last week, she pulled up her ancestry and her DNA. And I'm like, can we talk about my mental health? Yeah, it sounds like. How do you do that? Yeah, it sounds like your therapist need a therapist. Yes, she does. And so, do I have grounds to sue for that though? <laughs> I, I was thinking the same thing. I'm trying to think who I can sue too, Mama. It sounds like a lot of wasted right. hours. I'm not gonna lie. Sounds like you could is. give a bad review and you should switch therapists. Word is born. It sounds like you wasting I some hours. To support a black woman. I wanted to support a black woman, but oh no. There's other oh, black no. women to support. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Thank you. I love you guys so much. We love, love you, you more. So we love you back. <laughs> All right. Bye. All right. Well, what's the moral of the story? Moral of the story is set boundaries, find peace. If you don't know how to set boundaries, then go grab uh, Dr. Nadra Tawab's book, Set Boundaries, Find Peace. It comes with a, a workbook and everything. But the, the, the key to setting a boundary is simply saying no and letting you don't know anybody an explanation for your no. All right. We got rumors on the way, E? Yes, and let's talk about Drink Champs. Now, what does Drink Champs have to do with 50 Cent going at Jay-Z? A little bit. We'll tell you what. All right, we'll get into that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. It's about time. What's going on? Yeah. Rumor Report. Rumor Report. This is The Rumor Report. Talk to him. With Angela Yee on The Breakfast Club. Man, Lizzo hosted SNL for the first time, so that was her SNL hosting debut. Congratulations to her. She both hosted and performed on SNL, so she actually introduced her own performance, which was really dope for her to be able to do that. Here is her monologue. My name is Lizzo, and yes, I'm shocked I have clothes on, too. <laughs> I'm really excited. Tonight, we're gonna break the record for the amount of times bitch is said on live TV. <laughs> bitch, bitch, bitch. <laughs> That's three more. All right, so that was pretty dope. Yeah. I had no idea Lizzo hosted SNL. I feel like that was super quiet. We talked about it last week before it happened that she would be hosting over the weekend. I don't recall. Mm hmm. And then, yes, so that's the recap. But it's a great uh, show if you guys get a chance to watch her hosting. It was really funny. All right, now let's talk Drink Champs. Snoop was on Drink Champs, and he talked about, well, Nori talked about uh, his conversation that he had with Jay-Z about 50 Cent performing with Eminem. Here's what he said happened. I hit the homie, the big homie, Jay-Z, right? And I told him to come pull up on me. Mm. And he pulled up on me. So I said, yo, why 
who is the people that's on um, NF, NFL? And, and he said to me, and I'm sorry for anybody who don't understand. And he said, the white guy called for, for 50 Cent. So I said, who's, who's the white guy? I'm digging this Jimmy Iovine. Mm -hmm. And he said, no, Eminem called directly for 50. And he said, that's his guy. He said, I can't do it if I can't bring 50 up. But that's his guy. Now, that's beautiful. And guess who's Dre's guy? Your me. guy. Mm -hmm. And me. All right. Well, since then, 50 Cent has posted a meme. And he said, why did he say the white boy? Why he didn't say the biggest rap artist in the world? Happy Easter, man. Enjoy the holidays. So that's how everything happened behind the scenes. Oh, that's why 50 been throwing little shots at Jay all weekend? Yeah. Oh. I mean, he posted the headlines. Eminem told Jay-Z he wouldn't mm. perform at the Super Bowl if he couldn't bring 50 Cent, says Nori. And he said, why would he have to say that? That should be the question. Nori, your big homie is running around. I'm not going to finish what else he said. He said, you're looking like a something painter. Trying to look like a gay painter. Oh. Yeah, I don't think, I don't know if Nori was supposed to repeat that conversation <laughs> on Drink Champs like that. Well, <laughs> mm -hmm. it's out there now. It's out there now. All right. No, all you've got to remember, Nori's media, so you, you got to say off the record mm -hmm. if you don't want to, if you don't want things repeated. Salute to our guy, you know. All right, Anthony Anderson was on the Ellen DeGeneres show, and he was talking about the eighth and final season of the show. The series finale, by the way, is tomorrow, just to put that out there. So here is what Anthony Anderson had to say about being emotional about Blackish coming to an end. This is the final season. Uh, the finale is tomorrow. Yes. Tomorrow. Yes. Did you cry? I did. I didn't cry as much as Tracy Ellis Ross, though. <laughs> she cried every day. She cried every day. I mean, you know, she's she's... Actually, the last day, I think I cried a little bit more than she did. And I didn't think it was going to hit me the way that it did. Mm -hmm. You know, because we had been working up to that moment. We knew what the last day was. So I'd been preparing myself for it. And on the last, the last scene, on the last day, is when I lost it. And it, it was unexpected for, for me. I, I didn't expect uh, to lose it the way that I did. Wow, no. tomorrow, an era comes to... And, and Definitely the end of an era. Ugh. But I mean, they came, they saw, they conquered. I mean, you can't get any more successful than that as a sitcom. It's a successful run. Absolutely. So you've quit, not when people want you to leave, but while you're still doing amazing. They won. Kenya Barris, Anthony Anderson, Tracy Ellis Ross, the whole cast, Mad Stars came from that, other shows, grown-ish, mixed-ish. They won. All right, Colin Kaepernick, he was on I Am Athlete, and he was discussing what he would be willing to do just to get back in the NFL. He needs an opportunity. Remember Carmelo Anthony NBA. Can Carmelo Anthony go from being Carmelo Anthony and being coming off the bench? Can he take league minimum, right? Are you willing to be, do what Carmelo Anthony did if an opportunity presented itself today and they said, we want to bring you in as the backup? Would you take that? Yeah. You'll take that. If an opportunity... I, I, I know I have to find my way back in. Okay. So, yeah, if I have to come in as a backup, that's fine. But that's not where I'm. That's not where I'm staying. And when I prove that I'm a starter, I want to be able to step on the field as such. I just need that opportunity right. to walk through the door. Right. All right. So let's see if that can happen. We see a lot of conversations. So let's see. Uh, but I'm Angela Yee, and that is your rumor report. Now you know DJ Envy's here. He's just being real quiet. He's getting ready for the People's Choice Mix. So anything you want to hear? That's just not true. <laughs> hit us up. Envy went to go do Good Morning America. Okay, because his book comes out tomorrow, Real Life, Real Love. Him and his wife's book, Gia Casey. Uh, so he went to go do Good Morning America. But he did leave a mix, the People's Choice mix, all right? So all no right. need for me to lie to y'all and tell y'all to call up for what you request. Call up and, hear what you, and say what you want to hear. Let DJ Envy know right now. He'll get it on for you. He'll play it tomorrow. Mr. Breakfast Club. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. If you're a true music lover, you live for that connection with your favorite music and artists. Now, thanks to One Of and the NFT revolution, that connection is about to get much deeper. Learn more about One Of, the new green NFT platform built for the music community at oneof.com. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. I just want to uh, remind everybody that uh, my book, me and my wife's book, Real Life, Real Love, comes out tomorrow. Hey. So you can still pre-order it now or pick it up tomorrow. Uh, the Audible is out tomorrow as well. So definitely get it. And tonight we're going to be at Mahogany Books in D.C. So nice. uh, shout to uh, Jasmine from the Jasmine brand. She's going to be moderating that. So uh, if you're in the DMV area, come on out. And uh, we're going to have a great conversation tonight. I'm you got to go eat at um, Black Swan on the way back.
Black Swan? Mm-hmm. Send me the address. Okay. I'm Peace. glad that y'all get to go out on a proper book tour, man. A lot of people who put books out over the last you know, couple of years didn't get to go on proper book tours because of COVID. So I'm glad that things are back open to bookstores and you know all these other events. Cause oh, I'm telling difficult. you, it's difficult. But we're we're trying to do everything we can to make sure that we can actually touch and see the people. Cause that's right. I hate the virtual thing, so I'm trying to do as much as in store and 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 meet people and see people as possible. I don't like the virtual thing. I want to see people. I want to talk to people. I want to look somebody in their eyes. And it's just it's such a good feeling, man, because you know you never really know how people rock with you until mm -hmm. you're, you're 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 selling something, especially mm -hmm. something so personal as a book, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And it's one thing, like, you know, we we old, so we've been going to the clubs all our life, but when people got to come to, like, bookstores Correct. and, you know, where you at tonight with Jasmine Brand? Mahogany Books. Mahogany Books, places like, no, that's a bookstore. When people got to come to places like that to come actually to meet you, yeah, you absolutely. that's different, man. And you get to see the, the the impact your voice has been having on people all these years, so. Absolutely. I, I'm, I'm happy y'all get to go out there and do that. Yes. Uh, and if you're in the New Jersey area, uh, Wednesday, we're going to be at Bookends in Ridgewood, New Jersey. Love Bookends. Bookends, Rich, Ridgewood, New Jersey. So that's Wednesday. Love it over there. Tito's Burritos, the movie theaters over there. I love mm -hmm. it. I love, I love uh, Bookends over there in Ridgewood, New Jersey. All right. When we come back, we got the positive note. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Now, um, Charlamagne, you got a positive note? I do, man. And it comes from one of my favorite Instagram pages, Healing Black Trauma. You know, we always have these conversations about social media, but it is also about who you follow. You know what I'm saying? That can that can dictate a lot of your, your moves throughout the day. Healing Black Trauma is definitely one of those pages that makes my vibration high. But uh, they posted, stop allowing the falsity of social media to dictate your happiness. You're bombarded with smoke and mirror images of, of success, which is really people obsessed with materialism and attempts to cover their insecurities. Focus on protecting your energy, your peace, your journey, your healing. Focus on love from within so you can lead a life that isn't based on external validation. Breakfast Club, bitches! Y'all finished or y'all done?